Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. I'm here with my friend Homa, who I met some months ago at some, I think it was it Kali or was it Tara? Did you go to the Tara retreat? I've been to both, so. Okay, we probably Carly, both, both times. Both, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, up in Boulder at a, an Awakening Women um, retreat, um, a women's retreat for embodied spirituality. And I think we were partners for some exercise. <laughs> and I just was super excited when um, you signed up to do one of these interviews because I have, you know, in the Awakening Women retreats, they're not really designed to like get to know each other. Right. It's about going beyond the superficial and even our, you know, in individual like stories of our lives. So I really like to hear people's stories. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm excited that you signed up and that you, we can learn about you and I can learn about you. Thank you for having me. You're awesome welcome. That you're doing these. Yeah. yeah, it's fun. It's a good use of time when I'm not as busy right. doing other things. <laughs> working on that table over there um it's can you just very inviting <laughs> right it's a nice place yeah. can you just give people a um like kind of a history of of who you are and and what you offer and you know all the things all the things yeah sure um so my name is Homa and I am um by trade a graphic designer a graphic mm -hmm. artist and um, I hadn't painted since college. I had um, put all of kind of my own creativity aside and um, just working a lot for clients. And um, mm. I started having about four years ago or five years ago, I started having a really hard time in my life. And um, my sister got cancer and um, I was just having a lot of problems and I couldn't figure out how to get out of the slump of like ugh, this heaviness and um, mm -hmm. depression and I didn't know how to get out of it and um, out of the blue uh, my friend who also um, um, her, her mom um, she has cancer but her mom invited me to her um, house and um, I went and there was a sound dealer and I kind of knew I had to go it was like one of those things where you just know you have to be there and you're not really sure and before that I wasn't really spiritual or religious or any of that and uh, so anyways I went to their house and he does this um, uh, chakra opening with Archangel Michael and Archie of Faith attunement. And mm -hmm. um, I sat in his chair and I'm just kind of like thinking of my grocery list, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> which is what I need to take where, you know. So I was not in a spiritual spot at all when I sat in his uh, chair. And um, all of a sudden I felt that I was um, getting angel wings sewn into my back. And oh, wow. it was this um, most powerful feeling of being held and loved by these, by this energy and it, it hugged me and um, it was so vivid, so clear that I knew it wasn't my own, you know, like imagination or thinking. Yeah. And um, I came out of that and I was like, what was that? You know? <laughs> That was actually I cried, but um, yeah, so anyways, I just hearing you talk about it. So yeah, beautiful. so um, I I went home and um, started having all these dreams. Some of them angels, some of them more darker shadow sides coming up, and just all of these dreams came to me. And um, one day I I don't know why, but I had like these the, these papers, and I was doing stuff with my little kids and I started I felt like I was almost in a trance and mm -hmm. I started putting these papers together and it, it started looking like an angel and I I was kind of like in awe myself mm -hmm. you know what yeah. what did I just do you know and so from then on this beautiful love affair with painting came to me mm -hmm. and I found all these teachers um, online. Um, the woman's temple was a funny story because the way I found them, I remember um, 
when I first sat down and I was at, um, the sound healer's name is Joshua Inacio, and he's an amazing healer and um, teacher. And um, I, I, I was telling him and I said, I just wish I had a place where I could go and pray with other people, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm like thinking church, I'm not thinking, you know, I, I, I wasn't thinking of anything uh, because I didn't know anything else. Mm-hmm. And um, anyways, the way I found the woman's temple was, um, on Facebook, there was a cartoon and I clicked on it and it said Shamli Ardwa in Naiwat, five minutes away from where I live, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, like that weekend. And I was like, I gotta go, you know, wow. <laughs> one of those things. And, and I showed up and I just absolutely fell in love with the divine feminine and mm-hmm. their ways of thinking. And yeah, so it, it's been a journey of like, this is where you got to go next. This is what you're going to do next, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so clear, you know, where I'm like, okay, if I go off this path, they're going to mm-hmm. let me know. So, um, and then that's when I, um, through the Awakening Woman, I found um, Flora Abe, who is a teacher for the art of allowing. Mm-hmm. And um, she is amazing. And I learned so much about uh, putting together not just art, but holding space for other women and how to clear energy and bring that onto the canvas and just allow whatever is there and find that beauty, you know, of just being with who you are. So, yeah. Yeah. (sighs) So exciting. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Yeah. And, you know, just as an aside, I've been wanting to take lessons with you forever. And then all of this coronavirus stuff happened. I know. I know. <laughs> so, for, I mean, it's like, you know, first world problems. I can't have my art lessons. <laughs> yeah. But well, I'm healthy. I am working on online stuff. So, yeah. like everybody else, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like... Um, yeah, I have to, it, well, like anything, is there really a barrier here? And how can I move through this perceived barrier? <laughs> I'm sure I could just order some art supplies and work with you anyway. <laughs> yeah. So did you, when you were little, um, did you have a favorite art modality that you love? I mean, did you love, grow up loving, loving to color or play um, with clay? Or? It's funny because I, I just... Um, I ha- we have one of those videos, you know, of me and I'm sitting there with my mouth open with my tongue sticking out and I'm like coloring like this and I'm just really happy. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember like, uh, I think I was in second grade or something I, and I did like a parrot and it won an award and, you know, so things like that, but nothing where I'm like, oh, I'm going to be an artist or, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what made you want to do graphic design? Um... Graphic design was um, something that I, I just loved putting words and images together. Mm. And I loved problem solving like that. Mm-hmm. So I went uh, to Atlanta to the Portfolio Center and met this um, gentleman over there, Hank Richardson, and he's like the chair and um, just really fell in love with what, what he had and mm-hmm. went from there. So, yeah. So do you still do that work now? I do a uh, freelance graphic design. So yeah. but I'm not active about marketing myself as much because mm-hmm. I'm trying to uh, do more of the art. Yeah. And, right. and the energy work. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, do you do energy work too? I do Reiki. So. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Do, you, do you have like a home office? Um, not, yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> but I just go to uh, this um, place here in Longmont and I, work with on other people as like different massage people so it's a community oh nice I'm just kind of learning you know oh very cool yeah Yeah. that's fun I haven't actually learned Reiki as a or formally but I've had I've received it a lot when I've taken other energy work classes but not have have you um did you enjoy your your Reiki classes that you took yeah yeah Yeah. cool Hmm. Okay. So do you, do you get to paint a lot? Cause you have little kids. Well, they're, um, I have an 11 and 15 year old. So oh, they're not that little. For some they're reason, not I'm that little. Like four. And, um, I, I, I mean, when they go to school, 
that's what I love to do. So yeah. it's, it's either, oh, do I do yoga or paint? <laughs> <laughs> do I do yoga or paint? That's a hard question, actually. I know, right? <laughs> it's like, do I move my body or do I move my energy in, through the paint? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, 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 that's probably one of my challenges. I, I know that you, it's, it's kind of finding the time to make it a practice where I make it like a point of, okay, I'm going to come in here and do it every day. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Do you want to, so I know you have some paintings to show. Um, yeah. Would you be willing to show them and sure. tell us the stories of them? So um, first I want to just show you how I start. This is a work in progress. Mm. And this was actually just done with alcohol ink. And I was uh, working with um, Phoenix energy because I did a Phoenix meditation that's uh, on my Facebook right now. But um, so I just kind of, when I start painting, I am, my intention is to connect to something greater to myself. Okay. And uh, what shows up is always surprising to me. So yeah. I was painting it this way. And um, when I turn it around and I look at it, I, I see this profile of this lady over here. Yeah. Head. And so, so what I'm going to be doing is um, just kind of uh, making her, come out of the painting now so yeah. th that's how I start so I had no idea what like you know I was painting it this way and then she showed up and she's wow. very prominent and so I can't ignore her <laughs> so. that's so neat okay wow um but here's another one and this one I started with just um making kind of a landscape and uh -huh. bubbles, I call them and just having fun with color and I don't know if you can see see on here but she showed up where it's oh fine. look at her yeah and <sighs> she's just laying right on top and I call her mother earth so oh my she, goodness that's so beautiful look at um, her hair yeah so things like that show up where they surprise me and yeah you know, yeah so you just kind of build on what what the story is there and um I have conversations with them, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, so pretty. Ooh. This is another one. And um, so I don't know if you can see, but there's a bird that showed up that's going this way. And yeah. um, her message to me was bird's eye view. So oh. looking at things from, you know, higher up and more holistically. And like what showed up here was this heart. And I kid you not, I'm like not drawing these. I have like the textures just come up and and then I have to follow them along, you know? Right. And so um, this heart showed up that felt like it was bleeding and then the blood went down and there was a flower that bloomed. So, oh my goodness. Wow, that's incredible. Um, hmm. So beautiful. Thank you. It was a little harder. Um, so I have a class called um, the Inner Goddess. Yes. And in, in that one, um, you you connect with your inner goddess, and she gives you messages, and um, you paint from that essence of her. And uh, this one was interesting because at first I saw this lotus flower in front of her, and I actually had a lotus flower, and um, I started playing with the lotus flower to fix it or, you know, to get it to look more like a lotus flower. And then all these women showed up yeah. in a circle and uh, I couldn't put the lotus flower back in there anymore. <laughs> no. Oh, it's so beautiful. Thank you. I feel like um, so called to this, like this is the way I want to create art. I can't even imagine I'm going to draw you know, a bicycle now and like force myself to draw this yeah. particular image. Right. I can't even imagine that. I mean, that's the way that we learn when, when we're in school. It's like you're looking at a picture of an elephant and now you're going to learn how to make an elephant. Right. But I, you know, God, the energy of that art compared to, you know, being told to do something 
it's really different. Right. And, and I think, um, the whole energy work comes in of like in your intention of creating, co-creating with something mm -hmm. bigger than yourself. And, mm -hmm. and, and when you hone into that and, you know, you have all the right environment, what do I mean by that? You got your music going, you got your flowers, you got candles, you have crystals and uh, you're in an environment where that is encouraged, you know, for you to blossom. And, yeah. and the other thing is like the inner critic is mm -hmm. something that everybody has, you know, and, um, you know, it's an art wound. So, so maybe when you were little, somebody told you, oh, your bicycle is not great, you know, <laughs> or, <laughs> you know, that person's bicycle is better than you, you know? Yeah. And, and, and uh, it kind of stick, it sticks with you, you know, or maybe it's something that was brought on by yourself, you know, where you thought my, my bicycle's not great. And, and so the, the whole idea for me is, it's just the, the joy of creating and being in that process of loving, making things without mm -hmm. like worrying about what the end result will be. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and when you put that aside, and, and I have a thing for the inner critic, I, like I call it the inner jerk, and if, if it shows up, <laughs> I, get, I get like uh, rose spray, and I spray, <laughs> and I say, where's your inner love, you know? <laughs> so, I love it. So, and, and I think like for me, at, at least, and I think for other people, the more you do it, it's not just about the art anymore. It becomes yeah. part of your bigger picture in life and how, mm. how you show up and um, what your background thoughts are and how you're treating yourself in there. So, yeah, I love what you said. And I think one of my barriers has been, well, I don't even know what kind of paint to buy and I don't even know what kind of brush to buy. And I don't know, like, don't I have to know something about technique to make it this look like something, you know, right. these are some of the stories that I've had in my head about painting. Yeah. So that's, you, you take one class from me and then you'll be, able to <laughs> you're over it. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. <laughs> that's super cool. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll uh, tag Noah and, and see if we, we can do a couple's class with you because he's go. been wanting to paint too. And he's, um, he's been drawing, he's been drawing symbols from his dreams. Oh, wow. Um, which yeah. is really fun, yeah. but we haven't explored painting yet. So I'd like to do that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. So is painting like your main strategy for taking care of yourself when you're feeling turbulent or? Um, you got other th well, tricks and tools I mean, too. I think like music is really important for me. Mm -hmm. um, and um, moving my body, you know. Mm -hmm. So all the stuff we do in Woman's Temple. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I love going to Temple when we could touch each other. <laughs> I know. <laughs> More, not for a while. All we can do but, is goddess rinse. That's it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's... it's um, yeah, I think movement, music for me is really important. And um, uh, just finding the inner calm comes a lot from painting, but meditating as well. And mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. Do you have, I'm curious if you've had the same experience I've had as I've been healing and awakening. So many songs that I used to listen to, I just can't listen to anymore. Mm -hmm. I have like only a particular kind of music that my body and my energy enjoys yeah well when i was going through my like sad period five years ago i had all these songs where i was like i'm like why was i listening to that <laughs> but i think music does that for you it's very healing and it, yeah. depending on where you are in your life you know you gravitate mm -hmm. toward something that you think you know will feed you and mm -hmm. uh, but yeah yeah when i have a um a song come into my head. Does this happen to you? You get a song come into your head and then like there's a certain line from the song, which is like the perfect either trigger for you to look at something 
or um, like an affirmation almost. Do you yeah, I, I, I find that I find that as like messages for me. It's funny. Uh -huh. yeah. um, it, I have this thing with the song Ave Maria mm. <laughs> and uh, it will come on or like it'll be, you know, it will come on on my Spotify. It's on my Spotify, but it, it just kind of, I, and then I'm like, Oh, okay. You know, and it, it, there, there's a lot of things like that where there's a word and it, it might be that it comes to me beforehand and then I'll hear it or the other way around. So, yeah. I find that I'll even wake up at night with um, the lyrics from a song in my head and then I spend my 30 minute meditation or whatever like what do what I need to know mean? about this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is this why did I have this particular song come into my head yeah yeah funny. it's it's funny though because I I was in a meditation with a group of people uh, this weekend and um I had this visual of rainbows going from side to side and then like under me rainbows and then I was gifted a cloak of a rainbow you know mm -hmm. and and at, at, at one at the point you know I was like uh well I, I was dancing with rainbows you know I didn't know and um I a few uh, I think last night I picked out my roomy cards and um the roomy card was a woman um uh, here I have it actually right here a woman oh and a new gown a new gown and um you know i just read the message that it had in there and i was just bawling i was like ah! oh, <laughs> you know? so like that where they where when it comes to me i'm not like oh this is a this is something i need to pay attention to you know and it just yeah. over time then i figure it out and, and yeah so it's interesting how um learning to trust that intuition and like what is you know a message like the songs you know yeah so, yeah it's almost like everything's a message to me now <laughs> I, don't yeah. know. I don't know what isn't do you no. have these cards um no i don't i've seen them though and i wanted that yeah yes those are those are really great um for anyone who's not there are all these cool goddess cards marguerite yeah. Perret. The artwork is just beautiful. Yeah. It's a good, it's a good deck. All the decks. <laughs> so, huh. Well, let's see how much time we have left. We've got lots of time. Have you had any um, challenges around sharing your art? Because you just very briefly like shared a piece of your soul. <laughs> several pieces of your soul um, in art form with me just now. Is it hard for you to show, show that? Uh, in the beginning, it was very hard. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. And actually still when I, when I'm, if I'm going to post something on Facebook, I'm kind of like, uh, should I post it? Should I not? And then I'm like, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> so it's that whole idea of talking to your inner critic, and saying like and, and it's I think it's a muscle where you're the more you use it the more it becomes something like oh well I'm not gonna have a lot of likes who cares you know right and the worst case scenario nobody even sees this kind of thing yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and even if one person is touched by it I've done my job I think so yeah, yeah. yeah. you're right you know um, a couple years ago well, not that quite a couple. A year and a half ago, I started writing poetry again. I hadn't written poetry in, since I was little. I don't know, 10th grade or something. And then it was like all poetry ceased up after that point. And I started writing poetry after going to Awakening Women's, um, the Tara Temple, mm -hmm. and um, sharing it online. Mm -hmm. And people really liked it. And every time I, I did it, it was like, again, exercising that muscle. Yeah to just be brave and and trust that this is a poem that kind of came through me and it's it doesn't mean anything if people don't understand it yeah it's with their conscious mind with their yeah, intellect. yeah that's great yeah, yeah. so it was, it was hard to do though um and it's always it's kind of challenging i think for people to share these um gifts from the soul 
Right. Yeah. Because it's so it's so precious. Um, yeah. Such a precious gift. Yeah, I I have that thing with selling these because people will come over and be like, "Are you selling these?" And I'm yeah. Like, uh. no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you were or, commissioned or something, that would be different, right? Yeah. It's funny though, my last piece is like the one that I just love and, you know, and then every one of them has so much story for me, you know, Yeah. but yeah, I would have a hard time giving them up. (laughs) I would have a hard time giving them up too, um, to be honest. I was thinking about it. That's interesting. (laughs) All right. Um, I think that's a lesson in letting go, so. That's true. We're thinking about it. And, and I, I have a lot of paintings where I'm actually working on something and all of a sudden I have to just take over and it's beautiful. There's nothing wrong with it, but mm-hmm. I, it, it, something's calling me to redo it or like, and it's the story and it's kind oh, of like, wow. I, I've shown my friend this one that I did and it was just really gorgeous goddess. And, um, I, I took gesso and just gessoed all over her face and then something wow. new emerged. And it, it's, I think it's just part, like I was saying, it's a process and it's not, oh, man. yeah. <laughs> I've got some stuff about that. That's so interesting. Yeah. I'm like, how could you do that? Oh my God. Yeah, right. That yeah. would be heartbreaking for me. Yeah. That's what my friend was like, what? You painted over her? <laughs> like, well, <laughs> But it was changing. The story was changing. So yeah. you're right. It's about letting go of attachment. Yeah. And seeing what's next. What a cool way to learn that lesson. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Okay. <laughs> That's very cool. So you have some practices that you want to share with us today? Yeah. Um, let me see. So... Um, I, I have this online teacher, her name is Denise Braun. And mm. so these are some of her exercises and I just love them for quick, um, non-painting, you know, you can have a pencil and just a piece of paper and, okay. um, and, um, yeah. So the first one is, um, it's the circle of stillness. Okay. Mm. And, um, you kind of let's 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 do this together. Yeah, you take I'm ready. you close your eyes and you just take um, a rating of yourself of how you're feeling from um, from one to ten. Like, you know, how peaceful are you feeling? So, okay, okay, and that's it for for that. And um, I'm going to draw this circle here, this large circle. And um, the first thing we're going to do, and these are things that you, this is, this is an exercise you can do in five minutes. You don't really need a pencil and pen, uh, a paper once you learn it. It's mm-hmm. something that it, you can, you can be waiting for your um, kids to come out of somewhere, you know, and you can just mm-hmm. do it in your head and you feel better. Got it. And, So uh, the the circle of stillness. So you got up here, the first thing you have is breath. Okay. Um, So what does that mean? The first thing you do is you visualize the circle and you visualize breathing and then you start breathing deep within your soul. You breathe in and out like, uh, you know, however time you have like four or five breaths deep in and out. And then here you have your mantra Mm. and mantras. What are mantras? Things that make you feel good. So if, if you're anxious, you don't want to say, I am not anxious, you know, bring the positive to you. So great one is all is well, Mm. or I am healthy or, um, I feel, I feel good. I, some, some kind of, I am, you know, or something that sticks with you at that moment and makes you feel good, you know? And and then you come back down here and down here you have breath again. Okay. So you start breathing again for 
let's say five, 10 breaths deep in and out, you know? Yeah. And then when you get here, um, when you are closing your eyes, right here in your third eye area, you can imagine or see colors, okay? And um, if, if it doesn't happen, you don't have to like freak out or anything, but just envision a color coming to you, you know? And, um, and, and go with whatever is there as part of your relaxation response, you know? Okay. Uh, for me, a lot of blue and purple always happens and, mm -hmm. uh, and it's really nice. And so, and then you go back up again, breath, mantra, breath, color, and you mm. keep the circle going. And um, it, after you do it, do you want to do it together? Or yeah, do you want let's to do, it? do it. Okay, let's do it. Okay. So, mm. so you have your rating of the feeling of what you have. Yeah. So close your eyes. Take one nice deep breath in. And blow it out as if you're blowing through a straw. One more deep breath in. Blow it out. One more breath. Inhale. And exhale. And now coming in your circle to your mantra and repeat that to yourself a few times. Now coming back down to the breath again. And just breathe what feels natural to you. Noticing the rising and the falling of your belly as you breathe. Now coming to a color that you can see or imagine next to your third eye. And just let that color wash all over you from the top of the crown of your head Down, down, down to the bottom of your feet. Coming back to breath. Gently coming back to the room. That was a really great exercise. Wow. So, and then rating to yourself how you feel now. So, mm. Mm -hmm. very cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm all relaxed now. <laughs> <laughs> Just started with that. I think. <laughs> 
Very, very cool. So another one I want to do, still within the circle of stillness, you can have a pencil, mm -hmm. anything around you. Um, you know, I have some oil pastels here. I, I have some paint with a paintbrush, which I think I will do mine with paint with a paintbrush. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you're going to just make really slow, slow circles. That's all spirally circles. And what do I mean? I'm going to go with the first one. I'm going to go pretty fast so you can see what I mean. But a spiral, right? But when, when you're doing it, what I want you to do is pay attention to your breathing. Pay attention to the tip or of your uh, whatever you have. If it's the pencil, if it's the brush, just pay attention to this tip. And when you're, when you're drawing, just pay attention to the movement that this brush makes on the paper. And you can go really slow. And as you're going slow, pay attention to your breathing. Mm, it's so relaxing. <laughs> and, and, and if you want to move the energy a little bit, you know, you can say, all right, I'm awake. I want to feel, you know, <laughs> I'm ready. So you can start, you know, woo, you know, yeah. and so you just have that intention of whatever energy it is with the brush in your hand and the paper. So. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Very cool. Hmm. And just see what happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's just putting away of, I'm going to make something pretty. I'm going to make a bicycle, <laughs> you know, right. putting that all away and just being here with the material, you know, and with, with your hands and your heart, you know, and, and just see what happens. Hmm. So. Hmm gonna have to get some paints yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very cool thank yeah. you so much those are both really great exercises I wish they would I mean maybe they do I wish they would teach that in, in schools yeah I, mean, I used to do it all the time when I was little right little houses and hearts <laughs> yeah I, I I think the approach is different I could be wrong but yeah most most schools, the approach is like, we're gonna, yeah, like you said, we're going to make this bike. So. Be very structured. Yeah. But, but even just for, you know, just mindfulness for kids. Yeah. Like calming them all down before a test or something. It'd be a great exercise right. to just breathe and then give the test out. I don't know. Yeah, I I'm agree. Not a teacher. <laughs> yeah. I agree. What do you think? Yeah. So if people want to take lessons with you um, or, you know, want to work with you, receive energy work, how can they find you? So my website is soul-paint.com. Okay. And I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. And uh, I usually post my art in there. So uh, Instagram is probably the most um, up-to-date. And uh, then is it soul my paint? website. At soul, is it at soul paint for the Instagram? Um, for Instagram, I think it's uh, soul dash paint dash with Homa. So you'll find me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if you can't find it that way, just go to the website. And, yeah, it'll be on there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do you have any, um, like practically speaking, if people want to start painting, what would you advise people to purchase? Yeah. What's I mean, easy? I I don't think you need a whole bunch of stuff, you know. Uh, I would probably say buy a set. Uh, 
first. And, uh, you know, I like, um, hold on, let me show you. These golden paints. And um, mm. the difference between, they're more expensive. And the difference between these and like um, the other Liquidex and things you'll see is that these have a transparent feel to them. Mm -hmm. So you can layer more with them. Okay. And, and uh, you can layer water and like make it more light. But if you don't have that, it's fine to, to just have your regular acrylic paint, you know? And these are okay. both acrylics. And um, I would say buy a set. And if you could go into Michael's or maybe order online, they have the, those great coupons, you know? Yeah. And then so when you buy a set, you get like, I don't know, 40% off of that set. And it's, gotcha. It's, and start small, just because you might not like playing with a cleric. So you might like pastels more, you know? Mm. So, and um, I would buy a smaller canvas, you know, first uh -huh. starting out. And um, um, brushes, I really like these um, Princeton brushes. Mm. They're, they're blue. And I would probably just get like a flat head, one like this, and a small one. So just three, three, you know, to start with. Okay. And, and, and what I do like to use is I like to use like credit cards, uh, Brer, uh, plastic. So I'm not necessarily always using brushes when I'm painting. Oh. And I, I huh. paint my fingers, That's as you can see, I got... <laughs> You use your hands too. Okay. I use my hands a, a lot of times in the beginning. It's just so um, cathartic to finger paint and uh, be there with that feeling of the paint. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And what helps me is the music, you know, when I first start and setting my intention on the canvas. So, mm -hmm. um, um, looking at the canvas as a portal, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, just really mm. connecting with the energy of what you want to bring in uh, and, and going from there. Mm. But, yeah. I'm just writing that down. Canvas as a portal. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I have like a spray bottle usually because with these paints, it's great to make them flow with water. So you just spray on and you, you let it flow and it's just... Mm. Um, really sensual and beautiful, you know? Yeah. Wow. And you learned all this in the last couple, four years. Yeah. That's amazing. And your paint, your paintings look like you've been painting for a long, long time. Right. The angels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Are you finding that you're painting more goddess energy or more angel energy right now? Um, right now, actually, I don't know if I showed you, I'm, I'm kind of doing a little Phoenix. bit of a abstract oh. type of thing Ooh, so, um that's gorgeous that's one and you know it I, it started out with these sacred circles it was a class i was taking uh -huh. and um it ended up having this woman in the middle with oh a my God. bird and a sword if you can i don't know if you can see. i can totally see that yeah and i couldn't ignore her and i was like oh. well it's supposed to be abstract but i'm gonna add her on whatever yeah that's yeah. so beautiful <laughs> so I, i'm just having i i don't set out to when i do the classes i do you know where i'm like okay we're gonna paint angel we're gonna do an inner guard yeah, yeah. but when i'm kind of just playing it's whatever is coming to me you whatever know? is happening, yeah, is happening. Yeah. i was just curious for these times these virus times yeah. <laughs> what was showing up yeah yeah it, it it's funny though like um yeah, I, I find this practice so um, nurturing for me, you know, and mm -hmm. I just had like five minutes because the kids are at home and I came up and I started like do, doing something on one painting and it just felt so good to yeah. just, to not, to not be with that other energy of like the fear and, mm -hmm. you know, which is so much in the collective and the, the personal. So, yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. This was really fun. <laughs> I'm going to talk to my partner about signing up, <laughs> yeah. organizing something with you. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm planning on doing uh, more um, 
online art workshops. Mm -hmm. So I bought my lights and, right. you know, I'm setting up. Ready, ready, ready. Yeah. So I'm getting ready to, um, uh, you know, I do like a meditation, visualization, then I do, I show the videos and of how I'm making the art. So um, it's, it's not the same as being here, you know, because the energy we create together is, uh, you know, uh, amazing usually yeah. at, at the workshops, uh, but it's, it's a way of learning on your own pace and, you know, yeah. So, so is, um, Will it be live, these online workshops? Or no. you, oh, you're recording? No. Oh, that's great. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. Not, people, I mean, how many times have you run one of these workshops and I've missed it <laughs> for various reasons? Yeah. So it's wonderful for people who are like, can't come right. live. Because yeah. they've got, they're working or whatever. They've got little yeah, And then my audience is more global. So yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Very cool. Awesome. Well, thank you again for your time. And thank you, Jamie, I'm so glad you're doing these. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> so nice. Me too. <laughs> and I hope you have a really good night. Thank you. Yeah.